So how exactly does the quarterback pass rating work? What does it value? What does it not value? And what about it is absolutely wrong? First of all, it has four components. There's the completion percentage. I think that speaks for itself. There's the yards per attempt. Notice that it's yards per attempt, not yards per completed pass. Also touchdowns per attempt. So the more passing that you do, the more touchdowns you're expected to pass for if you want a high rating and interceptions per attempt. So if you don't throw that many and they're interceptions, you're going to get a zero. That's the worst you could do is a zero on interceptions. Uh, you get to have about one out of 10 attempts before, uh, before you get to zero. So I use this base example so that I can understand it. And hopefully that's a good way to explain it just so you can get a feeling for this. First of all, for my example, I assume that the quarterback would attempt 30 passes during the game, complete 20 of them for an average of eight yards per attempt. That's 240 yards. That's actually, that's actually 12 yards per catch, but it's only eight yards per attempt and have zero touchdowns. Okay, that's zero touchdowns. And what you get with that score, so that's a 67 percentage completion rate with reasonable length passes, no touchdowns, that gets you a 91 approximately, okay? So what's really interesting is that if you get a touchdown, then suddenly it's 102 instead of 91. So you get 11 points for the touchdown. And that seems pretty cool until you think about the fact that if a quarterback drives all the way downfield, gets to the one yard line, hands it off, has a competent running back who scores, then they get 11 points less because they could run the ball. If the running back fails two or three times and then they have to pass it in, they get 11 points for that. It just seems crazy to me, even more crazy when you look at a quarterback who instead is only 15 for 30, will still give them 12 yards per catch, so they have 180 yards, but we give them two touchdowns now. So they're only half as efficient throwing the ball. They just happen to be throwing the passes when they're near the goal line they have the same pass rating, 91. Now, I'm not saying it's important not to be able to throw it in, but that's a big difference. Only throwing 50% of your passes and getting the same pass rating just because you happen to pass them when you were down at the goal line. That just doesn't make any sense to me. That's like a quarterback getting the drive done mainly on the ground, a couple of missed throws, a couple of completed throws, and then throwing it in at the end and getting an extra 11 points if they throw two of them, again, the same 91 quarterback percentage rating. Another thing that's kind of crazy, you know those plays where the quarterback throws to like a running back coming out of the backfield and some running backs will see they're about to get tackled, not catch the ball. Some will catch it and get tackled for no gain. Well, if you catch it and get no gain, that's three extra points than if you miss it. That just doesn't seem fair either. Let's say you throw an extra pass and you get a first down because of it. That seems like a great play. What do you get for that? You get one extra point. Yes, one extra point. Now, if there's a pass that hits the receiver's hands and he drops it, he should have definitely had it. That's a four point turnaround for the quarterback, for the quarterback. If a quarterback throws a bomb 50 yards for a touchdown, that is 17 points for the game. That's incredible for that one play. It's an exciting play, but that's a lot of points. But if they get tackled, the receiver at the one yard line, that's only a little bit over six points. That touchdown, again, is worth 11 points. It doesn't matter if you hand the ball off and you get in the next play. Another component that we haven't talked about is an interception. That is minus 14 points in the scenario we talked about where there's 30 attempts. Oh my God, minus 14? I guess that's deserved on the quarterback, especially if they make a bonehead pass. But what if it hits the receiver's hands, goes into the air, and the defender catches it? What if it's a great pass and it's intercepted because of that? What if it's a Hail Mary at the end of a half, no harm, no foul, you're just going for broke and it gets intercepted, or at the end of a game, minus 14. Sorry, no love for context. It doesn't matter when or why or where any of this happens. Context counts for nothing. 
also counting for nothing, a win. Yes, you win the game, zero points. A first down scramble, fighting for your life, breaking tackles, that counts for nothing. Something even more crazy, if you elude a sack and scramble and make some great getaways and then throw the ball away, that's minus three. Taking a sack, zero. Also zero, a fumble. You fumble a ball, that's zero. Interception, minus 14. Look, I'm not saying that the passer rating is totally baloney, but I am saying that it really doesn't take context into account. It's something, but it definitely is not everything in deciding if a quarterback is good or not. Hey, if you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please hit my brother's bald head over here. And if you want to see another video, check it out. It's right over here. Go Jets.